Dash, I'm happy to have you all with me today. What's going on? Give me a woo. <laughs> I am so excited to be on here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's 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 start off with a banger right away. Something new out there. It's gonna play from my Wait. phone, so I might not be the best, everybody. Sorry about that. But okay. Can you hear it? I cannot hear it. Hear I it still can't hear it. Oh, oh. my god. I don't know. All right. <laughs> That's actually really sad. I was trying to play Titans, the new um Excision and Wooly song. Okay, it's cool. Whatever. We'll move past it's it. all right. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay, sorry. When we're not sorry with a banger. Anyways, okay. let's get into this. <laughs> Blooper reel. But, um, well, right. listen, I'm excited to have you on the podcast. Um, I we've ran into each other at some shows we've had some fun um but now i'm like getting excited to interview some friends in the scene that live all over so thank you so much for starting off Yay! Thank you so much. excited um without further ado how was thunderdome let's get right into it this is going to release a couple weeks after but let's talk about it Overall, I personally had a really fun time at Thunderdome. I encountered some like really like nice people in the crowd. Like if you said, excuse me, the people in the crowd would just like usher you through. They'd be like, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come through. And it was so nice. And then I only rarely ever encountered like really rude people who would just like shove past you and just be like, eh, eh. And then um, <laughs> the music was, of course, really good. I don't I don't understand when people get mad at like the fact that Thunderdome lineup tends to look the same every year, but like it's still fire and good music is good music. So yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And like there now we've both been to a good amount of shows. We've been to a good amount of festivals. I've said this time and time again. I think a lot of people agree, but like there, there is really no comparison in production Thunderdome is like in my in my book, it's top dog. Like it just is. Oh, oh yeah, no. Like if if you're at the front and you see that like r- <laughs> row of, I think it's subwoofers, the just PK subwoofers after PK subwoofer. There's like 24 of them lined up all in front of the stage, and it's fucking crazy. There's so much bass, and then every year he just seems to like up his laser game too. There's just, like, more and more lasers. This year was fucking insane. I have a video of his <laughs> intro from the first night. And it's, like, this lightsaber war with lasers. The and it's Star- fucking dope as fuck. So The Star Wars intro you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I am. All right. I don't ever talk about that much. I am such a Star Wars nerd. And when I saw that, when I saw that, I was like, are you kidding me? I just, I decided not to go this year to save dumb money, dumb money that is going to come to me eventually. And I missed out exactly. on my favorite two things in the world. Ah, it was horrible. You missed ah. out big time, bro. That shit was fucking <laughs> insane to like witness. We were just like staring back at each other, like jaw on the ground. Like what the fuck is happening right now? This madman. So, so the the video you have on your TikTok that has like 8.9 million views, isn't yeah. that at Thunderdome? No, that's at uh, an event. At, uh, it was a excision at Salt Lake City. Okay. He had like kind of art. It was like a two day event at the Saltaire. And there were like a bunch of artists like Hi, I'm Ghost and then Calcium. Uh, I think Kaiwachi was there too but yeah it was like your standard excision event excision event got it got it okay that makes sense that makes sense um last thing about thunderdome though the stage so we talked about the production being obviously mac daddy grand and then you said the lasers a lot more lasers this year which i have to agree even though i wasn't there but looked like it from the previous year and then the stage was entirely new different design and if i'm not mistaken doesn't excision like Thunderdome is like his like year start off. Like that's where he kicks off like his new production and his new set for the yeah, year. I'm correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I was just that's... confirming. I have like, sometimes I'm like, I think I'm not right about things, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's his premiere of his new tour. And then the, any show following that is basically kind of like a variation of that. 
Right. Like they all, had the, they all had the main X in the middle last year that like was. Yeah, I think stage. that was the best stage. I'm not I'm not too particularly fond of this year's stage because like I don't think it's just meh. Like, but the production makes up for it. The production absolutely makes up for it. And I think the X was so far like the best screen idea that he's had because like that's that yeah. just screams excision, man. Yeah. Like <laughs> that is him. That's right. That is him. Uh, yeah it makes sense it makes sense well we'll see i loved how the things the pillars were on the side again that was something from like wompy woods at lost lands that i absolutely loved that they got rid of that but um thought that was pretty cool that he kind of brought that back into uh an indoor show so that thought that was cool um so i want to kind of dive into a few other things here because you're obviously a yeah. very big content creator and you're a very big tiktoker you have a big follower Halloween, i should say and that is something i want to talk about just because it just it interests me it catches my eye yeah. and so i want to know for starters is how did you get started how did you start on um TikTok? i started posting on like tiktok just like random fucking videos and they were just super cringe like any any of my videos back then like now or way back then and even up until a year ago just make me like ugh, i hate being reminded that those exist so I started just like posting random things. And then I think I saw a person make videos pertaining to raves on TikTok or like I saw, I saw skits being done and I was like, oh, I could probably, I have outfits that I've already bought from like I Heart Raves. I can film skits or whatever the fuck in these outfits uh for content and call it a day and so I ended up doing that and gaining quite a bit of following and then when I hit I think 10k on TikTok I Heart Raves reached out to me and asked if I wanted to make a video with them and they sent me a outfit and I made a cute little video for them and that kick-started basically everything and I've just been you know posting a lot of so much that I've been <laughs> posting so there's like I think I want to say to two to three thousand videos on the, my fucking account it's crazy <laughs> yeah that's that's insane that's awesome though. I mean it the it the amount of posting correlates though I think to the amount of followers you have like in my head I'm like that kind of makes sense if you're doing a lot like that's kind of and I feel like you mentioned like you were doing it when did you start was it like a year or two ago you said uh, I want to say I started filming random shit like 2019 and the, like end of 2019 and then in the beginning of 2020 like after Thunderdome was like when I really started getting into it and then I think it was like April or May or something that's when I had my I Heart Raves collab and then I've just been going to hella events and like I've been just making content out the ass. It's it's crazy. Making content and living life, living life to the most, to the fullest, going to all these Oh yeah, absolutely. You want to be rich in experience, not rich in money. Like that's what money like you're you're never gonna you're never gonna take money with you to the grave. So like spend it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I got. I definitely. Oh, I'm shit. someone who falls into don't fall on mid camera now. Don't fall. I hit my. I hit my desk with my knee, and I was like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> um, I, I'm definitely someone who falls in the middle of that category. I definitely like to have my fun, but like to have some money, you know, away for later on. And eventually, I think I'll get to an age where I'm like, "All right, I've got enough time to go." Yeah, to the wall, but... I definitely like. I definitely understand. You know, some people wanting to like store away some money. You know, due to like emergency funds or whatever. I totally right. get that. So, yeah. I don't get the greed part of it though. Like where you're like more, more, more. Mine. I don't like. like yeah, I don't like you know. fucking in. I don't like really big rich people like Jeff Bezos for that particular reason. Because like, how how is this possible that like. You have this much money. Like, this is a whole other tangent that I'm just not going to get into right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is an EDM podcast. But if you want to talk politics, we'll talk politics. Uh, we talk everything on here. It's not just EDM. The, I, I happen to love EDM. That's part of the show. But nah, anything goes. But we'll we'll, we'll move on to the more fun stuff. We'll go back to content creating because that's what I want to talk about anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk a little bit about your your content strategy and how you create up create some of these things. You yeah. just talked about, like, you're posting, what, two to three days? Is that what you're you were trying to do or something of that nature anyway if i got that yeah. wrong walk through it i'm kind of curious on how you do that just to get 
honestly an idea of what I might be doing in the future and what someone else who's listening might be wanting to might be wanting to do. So let's hear it. Um, honestly, for me, I just try not to let myself get too caught up in social media because social media can get really, 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 really bad for your mental health. So I'm just like, you know, I kind of go by when I create content, like doing what feels right to me and what feels comfortable to me and you know doing what I want whenever I want kind of deal whenever it feels right like don't press yourself too much to have like strict deadlines or anything like that obviously if there's a serious collab that I'm doing with a big brand and they're like okay we need this video by you know I don't know in like a month usually that gives me a good enough buffer time to like figure out okay one of these days I'm gonna randomly feel like okay I want to get up and film this video so that's how I kind of do it I don't really like set a plan it's just like what I feel like for the day yeah because and like I try not to like get too caught up in numbers either like I try not to like care too much about how many numbers I'm pulling, how many views I'm pulling, how many likes I'm pulling, because that can also get pretty toxic and you start like kind of beating de- beaten down on yourself and it's just unnecessary. And then your content starts to suffer because of, that you're beating yourself up and you just want to be able to like create quality content that your followers can enjoy and relate to, you know, and like, <laughs> who cares? Who cares if it takes, you know, fucking couple weeks? Like, that's what people are following you for. And if they don't like it, they can fuck off. Yeah, no, 100%. You have that true authenticity to yourself. And that's something that I admire in you and your page. And that's what was going to come into my next question was, how do you find a balance of that? Because, you know, I think a lot of people think they got to stick to their knit, their niche, their niche, whatever they want to call it. Yeah. But like, you and you do a great job with that. But I also noticed that you have a lot of time in your page where you are able to like, go on a rant, talk about something that's happening in your life. Tell like, you know, you're like, I was at the bus stop today, whatever it was. You're like, I just happened. Yeah. Like, and I love that about that. I love that about your page. How do you find a balance between that? And again, is it just coming down to you're like, I feel like talking about this today. I'm going to talk about it. And you're just like, whatever you get does. It does. If it does 200 views, I don't care. I'm putting it out. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's just like, you know, at the end of the day, it's my page. I can post whatever the fuck I want on it. And if that includes, you know, me ranting about some mundane thing and that nobody else cares about except myself you know okay whatever who cares someone out there is gonna listen and if that's not you that's fine you can go watch another video that's fine take your view somewhere else I don't care you don't need to announce your you don't need to announce your departure this is not an airport thank you very much <laughs> I love everything about your attitude towards social media it is it's it's great I love it I love it usually so like usually like <laughs> I, you gotta like you gotta like you, you gotta have that kind of mindset I feel like you gotta be strong about that kind of thing because social media is vicious it can get very vicious there are comments that I have received in the past few years and on my time in social media that have just been absolutely vicious and like have made me sit there and be like damn that person is evil like why would you say such a thing like Okay, you can think it, yeah, but don't, like, fucking verbalize it. Like, keep it to yourself. Yeah, it's something about the aspect of them hiding behind the screen that makes it so much easier for people to attack and verbalize it. I mean, you see it on everything, not just social, but TikTok. I mean, I'm sorry, but YouTube and everything. It's, like, the fact that no one, it's an anonymous person or they can be anonymous that, like, allows them to just disperse that evil. And, you know, to be honest, you know, I really think about it most of the time. The person behind that screen probably isn't in the best life situation either. So not like yeah, ragging. They're, up, not... they're probably not the most happy with themselves. That's right. why they're like, you know, yeah. like I, I will admit, like I will regretfully admit I've been that type of person in the past. Like I've been like out to hurt other people because I have felt hurt. So like, mm-hmm. you know, I will definitely own up to that shit because it's, it's a fucked up, it's a fucked up feeling, but like, you know, you can only move forward and vow to treat people better as a result or like after so right it's I mean that's kind of what life is you kind of like learn your lessons and move forward and hopefully if you learn from you're doing something different you're growing as a person you're that's kind of like what life is you're going through things learning kind of keep moving through exactly it. yeah yeah 100 percent. and but yeah but i could imagine that i also feel like the comments that girls can receive 
compared to like what guys can are just night and day difference on like this the the comments of being bad and stuff i'm sure you can attest to that i don't i don't i don't notice much on my page and my page is not nearly as big so i'm assuming but um yeah i'm sure there's a lot more uh yeah i'm not sure guys. either because like i've seen like a lot of guys like just like a lot of the hate comments that i see in guys comment sections tend to be like kind of like ew this is so cringe like this is so corny bro like what the fuck are you doing you know like that kind of shit just making fun of them for like in engaging in this lifestyle or engaging in that sort of content and then like girls like you see they're like directly attacking like the looks of a girl or something like that and it's just like <sighs> and then they're in the girls dms like how much for a pig <laughs> I'm just oh yeah oh yeah it's crazy <laughs> like hypocritical guys uh anyways men annoying um terrible what <laughs> <laughs> god awful okay well i mean there, I, I will give exceptions i will give some exceptions to a few of you in my life so <laughs> oh, that's too funny that's too funny um have you as you've been doing more rave content have you gotten noticed at events and how does that how do you how do you interact with that how do you feel about that Oh, yeah. Many a time, many a time. I constantly, ever since I think it was the roll and rave in, in 2020, I was getting, even at, I think at Thunderdome, someone recognized me too. Thunderdome 2020. That was crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's every single interaction that I have has been so meaningful to me because every person that I meet is, a platform it's someone that has given an ear to my voice and has heard me speak you know like that is really cool and there these people out there that support me as a person and my content and my platform and that's it's crazy to think about that nearly like half a million people have inner like it's like that's like a hard yeah, number yeah. to conceptualize because like that's more than the town that's more people than the town I currently live in right now like four times over I want to say it's crazy I, I mean you gotta think too like you there's not many places on earth where you can conceptually see that many people like oh yeah the, no like the, EDC EDC is probably like or or ultra Miami I want to say EDC or ultra Miami are like the two festivals i think that would conceptualize rave like the the amount of people that follow me in a festival have you been to either of them yeah i've been to edc las vegas but i have not been to ultra miami i'm not sure about that one because i've heard vibes are kind of iffy and it's it's miami so like you know it's I'm not Hold sure on. about it, but EDC Las Vegas. Hold on, where my tea cup I... at? Where are we doing? We want some, <laughs> you want some tea on that? I, I'm starting the kettle. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, I don't. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, but um, no, you're good. There, there's a big you're contrast, good. and there are definitely. I'll quickly say it's a it's a international festival, and it's honestly not as big as you think. It's really small grounds for like the size of the festival compared to EDC. Really? EDC is way bigger, way bigger. Yeah, EDC is fucking huge. Like other people, like you know, I some people exaggerate how big it is because you know at the end of the day, it's not like a huge motor speedway, but like it's still pretty big. And like things look small, but once you start walking, it starts to get like it starts to seem a lot bigger. And you're like, oh wow, like okay, like this is actually really big, it's but. It's very, it was hard to do like stage to stage there, with, especially with all yeah. the people. Like, yeah, it's hard to just like be like, all right, we're, we're at this end and time to go run it. Like, no, it was very and hard to time and do that. Very hard. And it's so crazy, like how much, like, you know, how, for how big it was, how little space we had, like walking around, even in like, you know, not in the crowd, like 400,000 or something like that. Wait. What's what's the attendance? What what are the exact attendance numbers for EDC? Do you know? I can try to pull up, but I believe last year it was around like four hundred twenty thousand or something like that. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Like at one time, 
Well, no, I think that's for the whole weekend. I think every night it's like 150,000, which is still okay. way bigger than like any sporting event out there or anything. Like there's yeah. nothing like, yeah, there's not like a football stadium with that many people. They got like 95,000, but nothing like that big, like nothing. That's fucking insane. Pendants. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Can I like share my screen? Oh my God. I can share my screen, I think, right? That's insane. Uh, there it is. UDC Las Vegas attendance. <laughs> yeah, All right. That's insane. Holy shit. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> 10,000 people. That's insane. Capacity. So the day of capacity is like 135. That makes sense. Okay. So. Yeah. But like even that, like that's still like a fuck ton of people. Like that's bigger. That's bigger than a lot of cities or like towns. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's literally like where I live. That's like the size of the, the town I'm in. Like that's literally. I'm just like what the biggest arena is. Football arena is. Yeah. And then what's like the biggest festival in the world? Is it Tomorrowland? I yeah, I think so. Okay. Biggest state football stadium holds eighty-three thousand. So they, they so in one night, UBC Las Vegas was like, we'll just add another fifty thousand people to your football stadium. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's crazy. <laughs> Tomorrowland. Oh my god! I'm gonna. I really want to go to Tomorrowland. I want to go to like I want to do like a whole European festival tour. <gasps> Holy fucking shit, <laughs> dude! <laughs> Capacity um, is seventy thousand, but yeah, seventy thousand per day. That's crazy. Holy Moses! That's glorious, dude. That is insane. 75 attend 75,000 attendees a day. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That is a that is such a large number to see. Even if it is a week long festival, that's that's insane. I don't Oh that, yeah. That's insane. I cannot imagine but, that. But yeah, I like Tomorrowland is a fucking dream. Just seeing all the videos from last year, like that stage, it looked like a ha- like a halo map. I was like, whoa. I, I kept thinking it looked like Asgard, like the new, like new at yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, oh my God, it was so crazy. So crazy. Have you heard now since a little bit some people hear about it, some people haven't. I've been harping on it for a while. Have you heard of Tomorrowland Winter? Yes, I have, I have, I have. It's in the Alps, right? Yeah, no, I've, <laughs> I've heard about it, and, like, I I don't know, like, that's why I want to do, like, a whole European tour, because, like, there's so many more festivals, there's, like, I think it's, like, called, I think it said Climax, but it's spelled Q-L-I-M-A-X, and right. then there's Sensation Festival, there's DEF CON 1, but that's, like, a kind of a hard style festival, so it's not you know my type of music i would say but like it would still be like a dope from the videos that i have seen what did you how do you spell it climax q- uh q l i m a x yeah can't believe i just spelled it like <laughs> no way <I> can. <laughs> oh interesting yeah so a lot of the a lot of those are in the netherlands and belgium whoa Dude, this shit is insane. That's gonna be like a lot of trance house, main stage house yeah. type stuff. But still, that's yeah. that that's I have no problem with any of that. Whoa. None of no I don't think I mean there are some acts that come to Europe from like the United States that we know like do dubstep. So I think Tomorrowland, I mean, he's been canceled, uh 12 planets on there um and then we have god oh, i saw solomon king on there i swear to god yeah solomon <laughs> king there's a bunch of good artists on that lineup and then there's some that i recognized from like overseas too so i definitely want to yeah at some point i'm go I, i'm actually supposed to go to tomorrowland winter this year but i when i lost my job a couple months ago i i canceled the whole trip to save money and I damn could, I could technically go still, but I'm like, I just don't know if it's a good idea. <laughs> it's just probably honestly, not, it's probably not. if you're able to send it, if you're able to pull it off financially, I say, why the fuck not, dude? That's like a once in a lifetime opportunity right there. Because like 
For me, I feel like a lot of those European festivals are going to be like a one and done type deal for me. Like they're going to be so expensive to travel for and I don't want to. You recently went to Europe. You went to... Yeah, so I have family that live in Belarus, which is a country that's situated right north of Ukraine, right next to Russia. Um, and yeah, we had to fly into Lithuania and then go through a land border because Russian and Belarusian airspace have been shut off basically by all of the European Union members. So there was no airport that is allowing... Russian planes to land in, Belarusian planes. So we had to go through a land border and that was long and insane and never want to do that again. We were in line for like seven hours, hated every moment of it, but we made it and I got to see my babushka, which was the most important part of my trip. She is my grandmother. And then I got to see my aunt Tanya and some other family members, some friends. And yeah, and then I got a tattoo done. So I got this like big old hand dragon thing done over there too. And that was ridiculously cheap. That that sounds so sick. I was like, I was gonna ask you about your tattoos. So that's a perfect little segue into that. Show us what you got a little bit, because I absolutely love all the tats that you got. I love the snake one. All right, I'm gonna stop talking until the camera will switch. You can go ahead and talk and talk about your tattoos because I can't see them right no, now. No, you're good. So uh for my tattoos, I have this like cuff right here and it's got the Odessa logo on it. Um, or the icosahedron. Most, most people will know this from Dungeons and Dragons. And I get quite a few comments asking me, like, are you Dungeons and Dragons fan? And I'm like, no, but I like Odessa, which <laughs> that's their logo. Um, I have Adrenaline. This is the uh, molecule. Uh, I, I don't know what word to use for that, but that's uh, Adrenaline. And then I have a cab Manny right here. So Manny Heffley from Diary, uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Okay, okay, okay. Well, so I thought so. And, I thought so. But... Yeah. And then I have this like broken heart that's in like colored in with my favorite color and it's got like smoke coming out of it. Um, I have a little flame right here. And then I have a little ginkgo leaf. And then mistletoe. And then <laughs> I have, I have like, I want to say 15 tattoos, 16. Um, so I have one on my middle finger here. It's a gnarly blown out finger tat. Um, but that's pretty much inevitable with a finger tat. So I was like, nah, whatever. Um, I have this shoulder piece. Can my camera stop doing that? It's like, it's like literally falling. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> hopefully if I do this, okay. So this is my uh, first tattoo ever. Stop! Focus on my fucking tattoo, not me. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. Anyways, that's my first tattoo ever. It's a sunflower. It says "You are a sunflower" because I like the song from Post Malone. And then I have this like shoulder flower snake neck piece. It's pretty dope. And then I have some on my knees. And then I have. One like right next to my crotch, and I have an under boob one. So the snake one that is that so that all oh, that shoulder to snake to neck is all one piece. Yeah. It, how long did that take to sit? I'm sorry, I only have one tattoo, and it was like let's have this small wrist one. So I am not like you're but good. I want to get more you're eventually. Good. But I love them. I love the way the tats look. So tell me about that piece though. I'm I, that one's the one that so... comes out of this. This one, I wanted, my artist books out fairly quickly, and she books out, like, months in advance. So, like, I, when I went into this tattoo appointment, I was like, I want to get all the line work done in one setting. Like, I want all of it done. So, I was in the shop for nine hours, and that includes my artist, like, stenciling this on me. She hand drew this on. She didn't, like, put a stencil down or anything like that, because the way that it's, like, contouring my body just wouldn't allow for that so she just spent her time like two hours I think just drawing everything and after you know I was happy I told her which flowers I wanted to beforehand I was like I want a peony I want some cherry blossoms um 
And so, yeah, she put a peony on my neck. And then I was like, I want a snake crawling through it, too. And she put this little guy who we've named Nagini. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I have – I had to reschedule my shading appointment. It was originally scheduled uh, for February 9th. So uh, coming up in here in a few days. But I had to quit my job and move back down to my parents because – I had a mental breakdown. I was like, I can't, yeah, I can't keep doing this anymore. So I had to, <laughs> I have to like watch myself financially and I had to, you know, reschedule it for those purposes. So August, all the way in August, I'm rescheduled for, for the shading and hopefully uh, we'll get all that knocked out in one go because this has gone way too long without shading and I keep getting bombarded with questions like, when are you going to color it? When are you going to color it? <laughs> I'd be like, never, not just a mess with them. Never. Um, never. This is it. It's yeah, done. This is it. It's done how it is. You're gonna have to live with it. Um, ah. <laughs> just like I'm living with it. <laughs> um, another question for you on uh, another content creator question that just came to me. I'm yeah. curious on what, how do you navigate working with brands and brand deals? There might be some people out there that are just maybe starting that don't have an like, idea where to start. So how do you navigate with that? Just like you talked about with iHeart Raves and such. Honestly, I just like for me, don't take any of this advice to whoever's watching this. I just want to make that very fucking clear. Do not take this as advice. This is not me giving you advice. Next topic. <laughs> I'm just <gonna> move on. <laughs> I just like, I don't know, like, you know, obviously, like, watch out and make sure like a brand is like paying for it, like paying you, like, make sure to hold them accountable for paying you. But also at the same time, like, Sometimes you can, you can only take what you can get. Like sometimes like you're not given much and you have to like work with, you know, what you've got. And it's sometimes not the most ideal, but, but it's like, you know, and I hate to say that, but like, you know, if someone else has done otherwise, like good for fucking them. If you haven't had to sell yourself short, I fucking applaud you. But for me, you know, I've had to sell myself short quite a few times to get where I'm at, but that's not me going in off and recommending that someone out there does the so the same way, you know, because I want you guys to be pair pair. I want I cannot English today. I want you guys to be paid <laughs> fairly and you know for your art because content creation is art. It's a form of art, and I'm very big and like you know this is. If you're going to be wanting to make art, you deserve to be compensated for that because, you know, it's <laughs> everybody deserves to have a livable wage. Like that's somehow a radical fucking idea. <laughs> another political, another political rant I could go on. Everyone deserves a livable wage. <laughs> I think we can all agree on that one. hundred <laughs> percent. No doubt about it. I won't let it. Don't waste your breath. We're not going to need to rant on it today. We can do another right. podcast and you can rant about it. And I'll sit here like this and just listen. I'm all for it. We can definitely do oh, more talking this time. my hands together like a little shit fly, bro. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, <laughs> I've never heard anyone describe it as that. <laughs> oh, oh shit, fly. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh my god. All right. We only got five minutes left, so I got to have one more question in before Wait. it's over. Um. There is no right or wrong answer to this question. I ask this to everybody that comes on the podcast and it always is the last question. So Dash, how are you, you know, the theme of the podcast is live yourself for every day. So how are you yeah. living yourself for every day? Um, Just doing whatever the fuck I want and whatever I feel like it. Obviously, like outside of having a job, because, you know, like I got like, sh obviously, like I have a job to go to and shit like that. And I have like obligations on social media and stuff like that to do. But, like, also, at the end of the day, it's your life. Live it how you want to. Uh, and, like, spend your money how you want to. I uh, Treat yourself. Mottos. Like, money comes back. Your time doesn't. Like, just treat yourself, man. That's, that's how I live. 
I love how you ended that with a man, like just like that classic, like hippie <laughs> saying of just like, don't give a shit, man. <laughs> Can you now, tell I smoke um, a fuck ton of weed? <laughs> 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 oh my goodness um great but honestly can we can go to wrap it up again great model to live by absolutely do the things that make hey. you happy that that's 100 i like to talk about that that's why i like to have people like yourself come on the podcast and talk about them doing something that makes them happy and you i think you're a great example of that like i said previously how you run your page is uh, inspiration to me because i'm trying to figure out all right, I don't want to only do EDM stuff my entire life. I don't only want to post about that. I'm more than just that. So it's like, I think you do a great job of doing that and showcasing that like, hey, I love this EDM shit, but like, I'm going to talk to you about the car accident I was in. I'm going to talk to you about what's happening in my life. And you bring that all in and people follow you. I love that. I applaud you for it. I'm so glad I had you just come on and talk about it a little bit. Um, I don't have much time, unfortunately. Uh, Hopefully I'll be upgrading things soon. I'll be able to do more than 40 minutes, but um dash had a blast with you on had some funny moments some laughs i'm so glad you came on did this with me i'd love to have you back anytime um anything else you want to tell the people tell them where to follow you all that fun stuff um drink your fucking water test your fucking drugs amen we're gonna end it on that one bye everybody peace